Welcome to That Guy Talks Movies. I am That Guy Talking Movies, and this episode, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about a couple things. I'm going to talk about what's happening with the 7 4K edition, limited edition box set, what's in the box, collector's edition set, which I apparently am not getting, even though I pre-ordered it. We're going to talk about that. I also want to discuss um, some of the trailers and some things I'm looking forward to seeing in the theaters in the next few months, the uh, summer slate of movies and things that I actually want to see. And then what really inspired this video, I want to talk about, it, it has to do with one of the trailers I saw last night when I was watching uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. If you haven't seen that review, I put that up on my channel earlier before this one, so it's there's a link for it here. Um, but I was inspired to do a video on prequel movies, backstory movies, prequels, and taking characters and showing their backstory, their history, you know, when they were younger and blah, 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 and how they got to that point. And I was like, you know what? I have a couple of ideas. I have a few things that personally I would love to see backstories. I actually have been waiting to see one particular backstory. Uh, and we're going to get to the, into that next. That Guy Talks Movies. Okay, welcome to That Guy Talks Movies. Again, I'm That Guy Talking Movies. If you have not subscribed to this channel, before we get started, go ahead and hit that little red subscribe button. Do your thing right there. If you haven't subscribed, you want to hear someone talk about movies and trailers and random things when it comes to home media and collecting 4K content and all that, just random stuff, hit the subscribe button. To my loyal followers, subscribers, people who comment and like my content, I appreciate y'all. Let's get into it right now. So... This is Seven. This is the DVD of Seven. I have owned this since it's come out. It is one of the physical media things in my collection that I cherish the most. It's probably this one. Um, even taped the box up, and which in this case, taping up the box with Scotch tape actually worked out well because it's apropos for the John Doe notebooks, which were actually taped up with like old Scotch tape from a production standpoint. I'm giving a little information here, but when they did the production on John Doe notebooks, which they actually wrote in, they didn't just fill the apartment with notebooks that had nothing in them. They actually wrote like a lot of crazy stuff in there and they taped up the books and they found old clear tape, Scotch tape, from like an old uh, stationery store or some store that actually had some old rolls of it and it gets yellow, it gets that stain to it. Anyway, I'm saying all that because I actually taped this up because it was falling apart. That's how long I've owned this. This was a special edition DVD, as you can see. I may have shown this before. I believe the very first video I ever did on this channel was for seven. I'll put a link for that back when I was first starting out. And um, this is incredible. Like, it's just an awesome DVD collection and the special features and all of the commentary from Andrew Kevin Walker, the screenwriter, uh, you know, and David Fincher, director and Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman. There's just a lot going on here. Problem is I never upgraded this. I never went to Blu-ray. Never. And I've been waiting on a 4K. So we got an announcement earlier this year about the 4K coming out. I immediately jumped on that and did the pre-order. It was supposed to be uh, the limited edition, like there's like two, I think there's ultimate collector's edition. I got the, 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 whatever the ultimate one was, I got that and it comes in like a box, you know, it looks like the box that, you know, the what's in the box thing that's there. Um, all these different, whatever, whatever, it's just stuff, memorabilia for the film and 4k pre-ordered this. I'm expecting the order. I believe it was last week, like May, I forgot what day, May 2nd or whatever, like Friday. So I'm like, my whole day is revolving around this delivery. Only to find out later on in the afternoon that Amazon says there's a problem with the delivery. The order is like not fulfilled. I guess, I don't know if they ran out. They didn't have, I don't know what happened. I've, done, I've been doing some research to see if there's other people who are experiencing the same thing. And I really can't find much. I don't see an official announcement that it's been pushed back. I don't see anything on like where to get it. It's sold out. I did see something today though that said December now. So I don't know if Warner Brothers pushed this back, how this whole thing is working, but I'm really agitated by it because I was looking forward to getting the 4K of this. My favorite movie of all time. And I was really looking forward to that. So anyway, that's that's the start of this video, me ranting about that. Now, let's talk about a couple of things I'm looking forward to seeing. Um, 
I'll, I'll just go through the list. Joker 2, fully I do. I'm looking forward to seeing that. I did a trailer reaction for that on this channel as well. Uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. I'm not a huge Deadpool fan. Like, I'm not like a fanboy of that um, franchise. Um, I enjoy the movies, don't get me wrong. But I'm not like, you know. Wolverine, I really like. Deadpool, Wolverine, a Marvel movie. This could possibly bring some credibility back to the MCU. I doubt it. I really doubt it. I don't think this movie alone is going to do it. Um, there was someone in the doghouse. But at this point, I feel like this could restore some faith or at least give people, give an audience, something to cheer for and something that actually might turn out well for them. I, at least I'm hoping. Um movie called Maxine, which is about a aspiring actress. So she's like a porn star and wants to become something else. And then it's like taking place in the 1980s. And there's like a murder, uh, a serial killer running around. And I thought that trailer was interesting. I, I love nostalgic like 1980 film uh, pieces. And when you put an 80s soundtrack on any trailer and you're pretty much going to have me sold. Same thing for a film called Kind of Kindness, which is the same guy who directed Poor Things and the other, um, I forgot what the other film is, but... That, I saw that trailer last night for the first time, and I was just like, whoa, that looked really good. So I'm looking forward to seeing Kind of Kindness. Again, another movie, uh, 80s music uh, they use in that. Furiosa. Furiosa. Follow-up. The prequel, if you will, to the Mad Max film, right? Fury Road, which I absolutely love. I did a review for that on my channel as well. If you want to find a link for that, I'll put it in the, in the comments below. I don't know how many links I can put up in the actual video, but... I'm looking forward to Furiosa. I just pray that it's not going to leave us empty in terms of just trying to regurgitate and redo what Mad Max Fury Road did. What Mad Max Fury Road did so well was be, it was no complications whatsoever. It was, this is, a, this is an established place. This is where our characters are. We're going to get them from here to there. And then they go back from there to here. And along the way, on that road, they're going to deal with a whole bunch of nonsense. And that was it. There was nothing overcomplicated about it. There was nothing with um, Max and Charlize Theron, you know, Furiosa, and some love thing going on and blah, 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 and all this extra stuff. It was pretty much a very well done action flick. Furiosa looks... You know, a lot in the trailers, you're seeing a lot of similarities. It almost looks identical, but I'm wondering if it's going to get too convoluted and too hung up on a lot of storyline, which technically it's supposed to because it's a backstory and it's talking about this one main character. So we will see what happens. I just hope that the, that it is executed the right way. And it should be. All right. We'll, we'll see. That also leads me to Quiet Place Part 1. Now, I'm going to be honest here. I've never seen the first two movies. Didn't see them. I'm going to watch them before I see this. I, I would not do it the other way. I would have it no other way, right? But I'm interested, and I'm not sure why I haven't gotten around to it, but I'm not a big horror person, and I know it's sort of horror, sci-fi sort of kind of thing, but I, I haven't seen any of them, but I am looking forward to seeing that one. And that being a backstory, because apparently it's day one, so it goes back in time, and Furiosa being a prequel, that's what really inspired this video. So now we're really going to get into it. This is, this is what I want to talk about. I want to talk about prequels, backstories, and do we really need them? Oh, and oh my God, how could I even forget? The main trailer that I saw, the actual first trailer that came up when I was watching Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes was for Mustafa, which is the backstory of Mustafa, the Lion King, right? And I was like, really, do we need this? Do we need this? Who's going to watch that? It's probably going to make its money. I don't know. I didn't, didn't the last Lion King, the one with like live action, however, that was done with Beyonce doing the whole thing. Wasn't that not received well from what I understand? I, I don't know. But I want to talk about these, these backstories. Hollywood's obsessed with, you know, everything is definitely done in triplets now, right? Like you, you pretty much have to make movies in threes, right? It's almost like, prerequisite in the contract somewhere you know you come up with a storyline like no i only have one movie in mind no i just it's just one script it's one story beginning to end i i have it no 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 no. we're gonna need you to do at least two more you have to follow it up and that seems to be the case or they are remaking something regurgitating reinvigorating reimagining these are all the words these are all the rewords that they use uh and then they go back and they tell backstories which sometimes is good but like i said the mustafa thing i don't think we really need that so i came up with my own list 
and here's a drum roll. I came up with my own list of films. How many did I come up with? Let's see. I came up with uh, nine. I should have just figured out one more and make it a top ten list of whatever. But let's just get into it. I'm going to start. The first one on the top of my list and the one that I've been dreaming about and envisioning for a long time is Kaiser Soze. The backstory to Kaiser Soze. Now, my Usual Suspects fans out there are going to immediately know what I'm talking about. If you've not seen Usual Suspects, stop the video now and just get off my channel <laughs> But because I'm probably going to spoil some things. But definitely, um, you should see Usual Suspects. But to people who know, you know. Kaiser Soze. The storyline of Kaiser Soze, it's actually told in the film, right? So Verbal actually gives the backstory he kind of talks about you know he was turkish some say he was turkish and blah 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 and oh the the mafia had come into his home and they wanted to take his territory and they held you know they raped his wife and held his kid that that whole scene that scene alone was kind of like oh man i want to see how that whole thing plays out so i want to know the power that this guy has in the film and the amount of sway the amount of influence and just raw power that this guy has politically and financially and globally and his ability to manipulate just about everything that's a great character like just right there so i would love for them to go back and i could see the poster for this i almost want to reach out to chris mcquarrie and be like listen dude spoken to you a couple times about a few other things uh, way back when you came into Brooklyn and we talked about um, Logan's Run remake and that possibly happening. And at the point you were working on something else with um, with Brian Singer, you were working on some other film. And uh, I have some ideas. Kaiser Soze, the poster for that. I mean, the whole tagline of, you know, the greatest trick the devil ever um, ever pulled off was convincing the world he didn't exist. You know, and then like that, he's gone. Right, like little stuff like that. That's the trailer right there, and you just this black screen and Kaiser said the long hair. If you remember that scene in uh, Usual Suspects, you you're with me right now. You can feel what I'm saying. You understand it, but that's got to be a film, and I think it could be done the right way. Again, if Chris McQuarrie, Chris, please, if you're listening, if Chris McQuarrie were to write that and even direct it at this point, we're good. Anyone else touches this or somehow gets the rights to it and just kind of like screws it up, no good. But Chris, if you're listening, Chris, if I can get this to you, Kaiser Soze, we'll call it Soze. Just that's it. It's all you need to do. All right. The next one on the list, going gangster as well in that same theme, Frank White, King of New York, Christopher Walken. I want to see the backstory to Frank White. I'd like to see younger Frank White and him coming up in the game and blah, 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 whatever, that whole thing and becoming the King of New York and how he, you know, did. it's one of my favorite films as well as King of New York. So I would love to see a backstory for Frank White. Another one, Robin McCall, the Equalizer, Denzel's character. I want to see the backstory on that because as we start off the first Equalizer, you know, it's always this thing where he's a retired guy. He's not trying to stay quiet, trying to stay out of life, doesn't want any trouble, but somehow he gets dragged into it. But I'd love to see his training, his background, what led him to kind of give up that life and all those things. I'd like to see that story. I think that would work out well. Um, this one, this one's actually happening. So this maybe shouldn't be on my list because it's actually already happening. So Neil McCauley and Chris Chaherlis and company, Vincent, Hannah, Heat, Heat Part 2. I actually finished the book and it was phenomenal and I cannot wait for the film to be done. I think it's coming out in 2025, at least I hope 2026. I'm very much looking forward to this. This is basically going to pick up right after Heat ends. And Chris, if you remember, Chris Chaherlis is the only one that, that lives and he winds up uh, escape, you know, getting out of LA. So there is that. And he gets with Nate and who, who's played by, um, oh, geez. Uh, anyway, I'm at a blank, but it's the, it's the story of Chris in the future, like coming out of the end of heat. And then the backstory also to Chris and to De Niro's character and to, uh, Al Pacino's character and that backstory with the gang and that whole thing. So that's what that is. I kind of fumbled all that a little bit, but Heat 2, that's coming out next year, so I'm really looking forward to that. Next on my list would be uh, The Vegas, right? Vincent Vega, Vic Vega. 
right? From Reservoir Dogs, Michael Madsen, and John Travolta in Pulp Fiction, right? Vincent Vega. I really would love to see that. That's been rumored for a long time now. I'm pretty sure Michael Madsen shut that down. Like he talked about it a little bit at some point. Uh, and it's just, it's Tarantino got too busy and I, I don't think it ever got worked out as far as the script or the proper story. So it never went anywhere, but that would have been a hell of a, um, a backstory to, to, to see. And in that same, so number six, in that same line, I would say in Tarantino world would be, I'd like to see the Beatrix kiddo or the bride and, or I should say, I'd like to see the whole deadly Viper squad. So Bill's whole clan, right? Cottonmouth and, you know, uh, the, um, uh, Black Mamba and all of it. Like, I'd like to see that whole backstory. I think that would be great to see that. It, the only problem with with that one and the Vegas is that no one else could do it but Tarantino. You couldn't have anyone else just pick these stories up, write the scripts and do it unless Tarantino somehow personally signed on to a, a writer or a director. So next, John Wick. John motherfucking Wick. Bobby Aga. I want to see that backstory. Like seeing him younger, him training, him coming from wherever he's coming from, Russia, there, here, there, wherever. Him kind of, you know, they did um, the backstory with the Continental. So I thought that was pretty cool. I saw that. I think that was on AMC or whatever, but I watched that. I thought that was pretty well done. And that was the backstory there. I'd like to see John. The backstory to him. And then finally on my list would be Bond. I'd like to see them go to James Bond's character before, like when he first gets into him, like him being recruited for MI6 is what I want to see. Not just like, you know, Casino Royale picked up the Bond franchise and kind of started him when he got his 007. I'm talking about before he even gets to that point. I'm talking about when he's younger and he gets picked up by MI6 somehow and he winds up getting roped into that agency and gets trained and they determine he's whatever, whatever. And they do that film. The only problem is going to be casting because, you know, with Bond, it's like casting God knows what, you know. No one can ever do it. And that's always a big mystery. It's always a big deal to get the right guy to play Bond. So trying to find the right guy to play Bond really young. We'll see. Anyway, that's my list. That's my video for now. Me complaining about seven. I, look, has anyone else ordered the, is anyone else a huge seven fan? Does anyone else own this wonderful DVD set here with tape? Was anyone looking forward to getting a delivery of a 4K edition, the first one in God knows what it is, what's been, 20, 30 years, whatever. I think it's for the 30th year anniversary, whatever it's been. Um, you know, we're looking forward to this. Is, did anyone else order this? And are you currently on back order? Or better yet, did anyone else receive it? Does anyone have it? Please share. Let me know where you live. <laughs> if you're in New York, like, let me know, hit me up, right? But let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know about the prequel backstory thing. Like, do you have ideas for backstories? Do you have characters you want to see their history? Uh, you want to tell me about some characters who his, uh, whose history and backstories you could care less about and you don't think they should have made a film about? Let me know in the comments below. I want to hear from you. So that's it for me. I just wanted to get that stuff uh, off my chest and talk about it. This being the worst right here. This being the thing that's really agitating me. But we'll see what happens. All right. So uh, if you haven't subscribed, again, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button on the way out. I truly appreciate that. I appreciate y'all. Have a good one. I'll see you on the next That Guy Talks movies.